The roots of the Christmas story travel back thousands of years. Yet the division and war then, just as now, became a backdrop for the mystery of God's sovereign choice. It's the foundation for the power to overcome today's personal and national hardships. Here is God's relentless, sovereign choice of love. Thanks for joining us on Life Journeys, a podcast about thriving through the worst pain that life brings. With global initiatives threatening big changes to our way of life, we're going to need to activate Jesus' words about mountain-moving faith. Words That Work is the ongoing series on life journeys that is rooted in releasing revelational words of faith that will work every time and with everyone. It's about moving the mountains that keep us from the presence and goodness of God. It's about defining our life purpose and identity through encountering Him. Until we have the power to move the obstacles that are destroying our liberty and hope, we sing of Emmanuel, God with us at Christmas time. But to unlock the soul to the presence of God with us and in us requires humility. Intellect makes the key turn harder. It easily exalts itself above the knowledge of God with questions that can only be settled by faith. Why war? Why does God allow such hatred and hardships? It seems unjust. We don't get to define him. He does that, and he has also chosen how to reveal that definition. Learning how to walk out the sovereign choice of God in daily life hardships is what salvation is all about. The Christmas story is one that begins far from the sweet-sounding carols of the holidays. It's really a story explaining how God is working in the valleys of our lives and our nation. Salvation, by the relentless choice of God's love, is available, no matter how depraved we are. Yet, oh, what a journey of relentless trials it takes to shape the soul of a man or a nation to walk by choice instead of by pride. A family was once happily fulfilled in being the greatest and most blessed clan in the entire land. Others were jealous but unworthy of sharing in this family's power and love. But one day, 800 years before Christ was born, that family began to fight until a bitter dispute divided them for generations. The tribes of Samaria would seek to kill their brother Jacob as Israel divided. They would war against one another for decades in Israel's division, much like America is becoming more divided by the day. Divide and conquer is the strategy used then and now. And the goal is the conquering of America, and just as God allowed it in Israel, so he is allowing it in America. It got so bad that the northern kingdoms of Samaria came into a confederacy with Damascus of Syria. Today, certain clans of the U.S. are in league with communist China. What is to be done with the media, the government, the schools and universities, the sciences? medical arts, and banks aligned with America's slide into globalism. What was to be done with Israel when they were finally so divided through sin that they were conquered by Babylon and centuries later by the Romans? Should the repeat of this story today be met at the ballot box? Israel, you can vote all you want, but the Romans will still rule you. Perhaps you will find a man of great military genius who will lead you against this empire. Such could have been said in the days when Christ was born. One night a few wise men were led to follow their hearts eastward. Shepherds were told of a king they were to seek out. When men found the pathway ending in a barn, they could have thought this was just another goofy fairy tale waste of time. But they didn't. Though they weren't led to the Roman proconsul, the contests at the mighty Colosseum or the gates of the city where elders make their political decisions, they knew they were standing before the answer that the nations needed. Stepping back generations into the prophetic word about this night that Jesus was born, Isaiah said something to a trembling leader of Judah while his brothers to the north were about to come against them, the Syrian army at their side. 
Don't be afraid of this attack. And don't bother to claim a confederacy that just puts fear in the hearts of the nation. No league with a foreign power will prevail against you. If you're going to fear something, fear this one thing. Set the Lord of hosts himself as your object of respect. Set the fear of God above your fear of any political union. He is coming, and he will take no side one against the other, Israeli or Sumerian, Jewish or Syrian, liberal or conservative. He will be a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both houses, to inhabitants both near and far. But know this, Syria and Sumeria will not prevail against you. Centuries later, the men that night in Bethlehem saw an infant in a cradle of straw that was the answer of God himself to mankind. The answer was not political genius, military might, nor intellectual prowess. God has chosen the foolish to confound the wise. For it is written, it says in the Bible, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Hath God not made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The Pharisees, leaders of the fallen Jewish religion, held the political power necessary to kill the Redeemer of mankind and Savior of the world. Their wisdom was their downfall, as it is to this day. For any man. God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Now, don't ever despise your weakness. God can use it. All the world's deliverance is wrapped up in the humble realization that we'll only be saved by one thing, and it's not nuclear, solar, cashless, all-inclusive, diverse, or equitable at all. It's the sovereign choice of God. Only those who accept His choice by grace through faith in Him will overcome what God has let loose in the earth. And what is that one thing He has let loose? Free will and all the consequences that come with it. The atheist says there can be no God because God would have allowed all the starving children in Africa and all the leukemia and the innocent Yet how often has that atheist gone to Africa to feed the starving children or gone to the hospital to console a child with cancer? He trusts in his intellect as a free thinker because the God of the universe has given him a free will and he has chosen sin, Satan, and human potential. He is the one who has allowed all the suffering in this world through sin and yielding to Satan. He proves the word of God, who has said the world, by wisdom, knew not God. He chose to reveal his answer for mankind in a lowly stable through a Savior that Israel would immediately attempt to kill and thus drive Mary and Joseph into Egypt for a season. Men will move according to their hearts. Nations will conform to the hearts of the men who rise up to lead it. Families will divide or unite according to the light that is in them. Why Israel? Because God chose them, and for no other reason. Were they more moral, more intelligent, more honorable, noble, or adorable? No. The only reason Israel exists is because there is a God. There is no other explanation. God chose to save the world by love, holiness, and faith alone. And he used Israel to send that message. To the wicked king of Judah, King Ahab, when they were about to be attacked by the brothers to the north, there was a message that was given, a message of grace. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them has the light shined. The prophet called this promised land, the land of the shadow of death. It reminds me of the verse, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
Though there is death all around, and though a family may be in the shadow of death, it doesn't mean that they are not the choice of God. Remember that clearly. The prophet had told Judah not to fear Samaria and Syria. They were mere men, he said. Fear not, take heed, and don't be faint-hearted. Why? Because you're so great and noble, Ahab? No, and he knew it in his own heart. Don't fear for this one reason. God said not to fear. Only believe. Have faith in God even when you're going through the fire of great dread over the news of your imminent destruction. Trust because of one reason. You've been chosen. The prophet said, If you will not believe, you will not be established. The prophet then said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. To this day, Israel as a nation has rejected Jesus as their Messiah, but not all have. Paul said in Romans 11 that a remnant has been chosen by God. He has reserved a people for himself. They are among the elect of God. You see, God also has an election. They are people who are called the elect, meaning ones chosen by God. Today their choice is established when they come to faith in Christ. The elect are not Jewish, nor are they just the Gentiles. They are all those called and chosen by grace through faith alone. Just as war broke out against Judah in the prophet Isaiah's time over 700 years before Christ, so is war going to break out again against them. It's happened many times in the past, and it will happen one last time during the global government when the Great Tribulation breaks out. But again, it will be under the sovereign hand of God that his election by choice might stand. This is the real challenge of the Christmas story of sovereign choice. God chose you. If you will accept it and receive it, he is highly honored all who will trust in him when the winds blow, those faithful who recognize true love and holiness when they see it. This is what unconditional love looks like in the face of relentless sin. God answered over 1,500 years of Israel's rebellion by sending them a Savior to die for them, even at their own hand. Paul was one of those he chose But he was a persecutor of the church at first, yet God chose him to find salvation and write over one-third of the New Testament. He tells us why he did this, that men may know that salvation is available by sovereign choice through God's election alone. Just because we've been terribly sinful does not mean we can't find God's grace by turning the key of humility and faith. The only way love can be unconditional is if it is a choice in the face of all obstacles. God's promise is God with us. His love is God for us. His choice is life given to us. And his mystery is God in us. You can unlock the presence of God in your life. There are revelation principles that remove the mountains, keeping us from joy, hope, peace, and purpose when our world gets turned upside down. Look for these words that work with Pastor Hardica as he shares what has helped him when life got hard. And don't forget to check out his book, The Fortress and the Firebrand, available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Thanks for listening to Life Journeys. Find new episodes every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you're new to this series, it begins with the September 16th episode. Salvation by the relentless choice of God's love is available, no matter how depraved we are. Yet, oh, what a journey of relentless trials it takes to shape the soul of a man or a nation to walk by choice instead of by pride.